Welcome back to the Hack of the Hermit series. This is still part one, practices and prerequisites for achieving mastery of our microcosm. In these videos, we're learning the seven keys for unlocking our magical potential. If you haven't already, please go back, watch the very first video so that you begin this series from the beginning. Otherwise, you're gonna be going out of order and it's not gonna make any sense. And if you wanna stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you what I'm smoking and drinking today. The um, we're on to key number five. We've already gone over key number one, aspiration. Key number two, breath. Key number three, chi. Key number four was dissolving our desire. Now we're on to key number five, expectations. So if you were to go to the gym, you wouldn't expect to build muscle in a day or a week or even a month, right? You would do the practices, you would do the reps, you would put in the time, and over time, you would expect if you did it properly and you didn't get injured, you would actually have some gains to show. But it might take a year, right, to get even just small gains, and maybe the next year even more gains. Meditation is exactly the same way. Um, advanced yoga is exactly the same way. So what you wanna do is you wanna manage your expectations and just be kind to yourself, and you want to remember that building muscle takes time. We're using muscles that you've never used before. So the muscles that we're using um, are our breath, pranayama techniques. We're using um, a muscle called stillness, accessing our stillness. You've never done that before, most likely. And then we're doing something called accessing the will of the magi. This is something that we've most likely never done before. So we're accessing our will. We're finding out how to carve out a path to our um, to the part of our self that is harder than sapphire that cannot be moved. The immovable, the immovable will of the magi. So we want to manage our expectations and we also want to admit our limitations. Um, we want to remember perhaps, perhaps you have health conditions that you need to overcome before you can truly take on some intense advanced yoga course. Maybe you need to carve out um, special times in your day. In fact, maybe you need to cut things out of your life that are getting in the way of you taking your spiritual practice seriously. Um, maybe you need to Focus on logistics and planning. Maybe you need to get rid of things that are that are uh, time wasters. Perhaps you need to make a space in your home that you can actually uh, dedicate to practicing yoga. <clears throat> so um, health and time and planning logistics, we need to know our limitations. We also want to own our own BS. So we deep down we know that the times that we say, I don't have time for that, the truth is, that actually means we don't make time for that because we have time for anything. We have time for anything that's important to us. Just look at anybody's life. Notice what, what they do, most, most what they spend most of their time on, and, and that's, that's what's important to them. So if I spend most of my day on my telephone here looking at my applications, clicking and clicking and tapping, then guess what's important? Guess what? Guess what? I, I might actually not be in alignment with my values, but on paper, my values are phone is important. Staying connected on social networking, important. And when my kid comes around and, and he's like, hey, daddy, want to want to play with me? Want to play Transformers with me? And I'm like, yeah, maybe later. But later never comes because I'm still clicking. Guess what? Phone is more important than child. And that's that's because a human being is an action verb. Actions are loud, words are meaningless. So decide what's important, put action behind those values and shift those values if you need to. And um, so, so we're managing our expectations, we're knowing our limitations, and we're owning our own BS. That's, that's key number five, expectations. And we're gonna move right into key number six, which is fan the flames. So um, we've talked quite a bit about our breath. This is, this is the limb of yoga known as pranayama that focuses on our breathing and uses breath in order to, to advance us into higher levels of consciousness and to upgrade our nervous system so that we can um, reach advanced st stages of, of, of yoga. So um, what we're actually doing is we're tilling the soil so that we can plant the seed. The seed, my friends, is stillness. I don't believe we said that yet. Um, the seed that we're going to be planting in the soil that is all this breath work that we're doing is the stillness. So at the end of our practice, remember we've, we've charged up our emotional body, we've charged up our physical body, we've done a lot of work already to get to where we are. We don't waste it. We end each practice 
with absolute stillness. The stillness, the kind of stillness where you're just letting go of doing and you're just being in the present moment and you're just letting go and you're feeling your physical body from within. You might notice some thought clouds go by in the sky that you are. Maybe some emotional clouds go by in your emotional body, but you are the field of awareness in which all phenomena is occurring in. Just being the silent observer of all temporal phenomena such as thoughts and feelings and sensations, and perceptions and judgments and beliefs, ideas and concepts. They, all may, they might be well and good, but, but they're not but they're not helping us when we're practicing stillness. Uh, we don't want to attach ourselves to anything that goes by in the field of awareness that we are. So just watch the thought go by, nothing stays. Nothing ever stays in the field of awareness that we are. So that's what we're practicing at the end of every practice. We're bringing it down to the stillness and because, because we've, t we've done the work of tilling the soil, now the seed of stillness will take root. And when, when stillness takes root in your lives, my friends, it leaks into every aspect of your life and you bring stillness into the way that you're a friend and a father and a mother and a parent and a brother and a sister and a co-worker and an aunt and an uncle. All the roles that we play, you bring stillness into every aspect of that, those relationships. Excuse me. So that's what we're doing. We're tilling the soil for the seed of stillness. Remember that. And then we're also, we're quietly drawing up the energy up the spine during spinal breathing. So remember, when we're practicing this microcosmic orbit around our entire body, this is spinal breathing. We're breathing up the spine and back down the spine. This is a very advanced yoga technique and it will absolutely change your life. Practice it for six months and let me know if you haven't been transformed by it. Just that alone but when you add both when you add the the magical component of the breath and the magical component of the stillness when you put them together they will transform your life and the final step of fan the flames is that you want to remember uh, repetition so growth takes time you want to patiently practice daily um, doing the reps putting in the work we're growing we're growing our ability to be faithful to a practice that you do not see immediate results. The part of our brain that is used to instant gratification, we need to pat that little guy on the head and say, it's okay. It's okay. Um, again, our ego will hijack our, our spiritual practice every time because he's like, have it grown yet? Have it grown yet? And it's like, dude, you're watching the grass grow and you're wanting to see things shoot up in a day and it's not gonna happen. So what you need to do um, is remember that you can't make up for lost time on the, on the weekend. So it, it's gonna take carving out a special time in your day, multiple times in your day in order to commit to practicing. You can't make up for it. You can't take a handful of pills because you haven't been taking your vitamins all month long and think that it's gonna be okay. You're gonna OD on that shit. So you wanna be careful, be careful to be consistent. Um, this is. These are very powerful yoga techniques and you don't want to just use them too much. You don't want to meditate for six hours in a day. Again, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, and throughout your day, committing to doing orbits as you go, and they'll add up. Throughout your day, if you, if you commit to the two times in the day and doing, doing it all day long, you'll have about a thousand um, orbits that you did. So um, be faithful. To the practice and don't be hard on yourself and expect change to come overnight so a lot of this was kind of tips uh, and just things to remember this is continuing our sitting practice and as always I like to show you what I'm smoking and drinking today today I am enjoying this very special beer that I've somehow get access to everywhere I move to and this is the expedition stout by bells have you ever had this guy it's a uh, the Russian Imperial Stout. God, the lighting is awful on this. You can't even see it very well. But um, anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, Russian Imperial Stout, thirst for travel. A huge malt body is matched with a blend of complex chocolate, dark fruit, and roasted aromas. This beer is ready to be enjoyed now 
or sit perfectly content in your cellar until the next journey. And I used to sell these guys on the regular back when I lived in Tampa, and I used to, to have um, a pretty good beer cellar. Um, these days I don't really do that very much. But um, it's a really, really good Russian Imperial Stout. I recommend trying it if you get a chance to. And if like it, like it says, buy a couple of packs of them. They're like, I want to say they're like 16 to 18 bucks for a six pack. So it's kind of hefty, you know, for most people to grab a six pack of, that's going to cost nearly $20. Uh, to be honest, is a drop in the bucket. I like to, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'll, that guy's going to last me months. Uh, the, not the one beer, but the six pack. And then uh, to go with it, this very special uh, stick. And uh, this is the Liga Pravada. I always get it in the double Corona size because I think that this is an amazing size. And I like that it lasts a really long time. And it's a fine cigar. This is the Sun Grown, and they just came out with um, with the Sun Grown in the Dogma shape. And uh, anyway, that's uh, I haven't got a chance to try that, but I always get this cigar. This is another go-to for me. Um, the again, the Sun Grown Liga Pravada. It's a really good cigar, and I really like it in this big giant cigar. It's just um, delicious, and uh, yeah, so. Let me know if you guys have tried this stuff, and um, most importantly, let me know how you're going with these practices, and keep it up. Be faithful. Practice faithfulness. Access the will of the Magi. Do not give up. Like, you're going to have this temptation to give in and give up, and, and like, like, like you'll lose steam. It's a guarantee that you'll lose steam, and you got to keep doing it. After six days of showers, there's going to be that seventh day where you're like, I really don't feel like a cold shower. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it, do it every day. If you skip them, if you like in the morning, you don't do it. Take two that night. Make yourself like, you know, it's not like punishing yourself, but it's like holding yourself accountable, you know, keep, keep it high vibrational, but, um, but make yourself do the things you don't want to do because you want to maintain that access to your will at all times. Because in order to do magic, you have to understand how to access your will, your emotions, and um, yeah, I think I, I think I've pretty much covered everything today. So, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't, um, if you haven't uh, started from this thing from the beginning, I, I do recommend that you do begin this from the beginning so that you're getting the the, the entire practice. Otherwise, this is going to be completely out of context. So, thanks again for for uh, watching this video. Grace and peace. To you.